Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be where you are. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is November 11th, 1111. And it's, we should stop at 1111 today. It is November 11th, 2018. Thanks so much for joining my live stream. We're going to write a little bit of code today. Um, gosh, look at all our friends already in the chat room there. Hey, Code for Veronica and the Nerd. Ada Plexi is here. Moz, hey, how's it going, Moz? Good to see you. Tagaron, Bardaki. Ada Plexi says, I don't want to go to work. You're going to go to work and you're going to like it. No, no, let's figure out what works for you. I'm sure you can work something out. How's it going, Turrican? Good afternoon. I'm, uh, I'm wearing my diva hat today. Look at that. Because um, I'm excited about what's been happening in the Overwatch League this week. If you, if you haven't been following and, and um, if you haven't seen some of my streams in the past, um, you may know that I am a big fan of the game Overwatch, and I really like the idea of this Overwatch League that Blizzard is running. Last, last year, the 20, 2018 season, we had, what was it, 12 teams playing, 12 teams, including my local Philadelphia Fusion, eight new teams joining the league this year, and uh, we saw the announcement of the Guangzhou Charge this week. That's pretty cool. I love seeing the beginning, the introduction of another team from China, and we also saw, who came out this week as well, the Paris Eternal. So our friends in France have their have their own team in uh in clad in, in I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess this up in my best French accent, Bleu and Rouge. Uh, Atlanta has a team as well. The Atlanta, um, I'm going to get this wrong, Atlanta Rain in red and black. They're going to be, they're going to be phenomenal, sporting those same colors as your Atlanta Falcons. Um, it's not carnival season. Yes, a fellow Philly dev, Tony Rumble. Absolutely. But we also saw... We saw a sneak preview of Chengdu's team. Um, and Chengdu, the, the, right, there was a leak. And it looks like they're going to be the Chengdu Hunters coming out of China there with a, uh, a panda theme. Another three months for the golden mug. <laughs> Thanks so much for the subscription there, Tagaron. And uh, we'll make a donation to Girl Develop It. Yes, absolutely. Headed towards, so you have some loyalty uh, icons there next to your chat. Um, you start with a purple mug, you go to a, I believe it's red is the second mug, after three months, then you go to a blue mug, after six months, after a year, you get a gold mug. Isn't this going to be Flower's first season? Ada Plexi's referring to a South Korean player named Flower, at least that's his nickname, and uh, he's now old enough to play in the league, and he's going to be playing this season for New York, yes. So that'll be interesting. Um, you know what? My images there need to be reloaded. It's not quite my event images because I removed the event that I was at this week. Um, you know what? It looks like it is running properly now. We'll keep an eye out for an empty space there. Hey, Fred, yeah, good to see you. Um, oh yeah, but it'll be uh, it'll be really cool to see these new these new teams in the upcoming season. Um, we saw Toronto. Toronto is the defiant and. Uh, we have yet to see D.C. There's a rumor it's the Washington Justice coming out of Washington, D.C. And the final team that we still haven't heard from is Vancouver. I look like I have a glitch in the matrix in the right bottom. I actually have that space removed so I can kind of hide the microphone down there. And also that's where I have uh, the one filler light for my green screen. All right. Um, I want to go over here and start talking about a couple things that are going on. Um, I did some work in Core Wiki while I was flying, because what does one do while they're stuck in a plane for a couple hours? And I want to talk about that, and it kind of wraps up what we started in Las Vegas the other day. Um, it's always fun to, to be able to present, to talk to you while I'm on the road, because um, it can get boring, it can get lonely when you're out traveling. So to, to be able to run my stream when I'm out in Las Vegas, when I'm out in Seattle or wherever my travels may take me to be able to share time with you writing code together is always a treat and I very much appreciate when you do join me when I'm in those extra locations let's get some music playing in the background here um you know what today uh um, I don't have a, a p 
pink, but you know what? I'm wearing a purple shirt. Let's go with purple today. There's music playing, I swear. It's here somewhere. There it is. It is. It starts quiet, but it'll ramp up. Trust me on this. Um, so let's uh, just check that sound real quick. I can bump this up a smidge. Because this one is one of the more quiet songs. There we go. How's that sound now, chat room? Let me know. All right. Um, so this is, of course, music to code by from our friend Carl Franklin. Scientifically engineered to get you in the flow, get you in the groove so that you can focus on whatever task it is that you might have. Check it out, mtcb.pwop.com. Or you can, you can subscribe to the, uh, to the service, to the application at music to flow by. Dot plop dot, uh, I'm sorry, music to flow by dot com. Ho ho. Get that right, Jeff. All right. Let's talk about some of the changes that we were going through and we were talking about on Core Wiki. And I've got another pull request here I haven't seen yet. Um, so UI improvements. All right. We will take a look at that today. But I want to discuss. Oh, here's another one from Arg Tang. New login thoughts. Let's zoom in a little here. I want to make sure I call out the Rainbow Beard Challenge here. If we get to 5,000 followers, 5,000 before December 1st, I will dye this beard rainbow for the Dev Intersection Conference. And it will be, if you have, if you followed anything that's going on for that event, it is going to be an amazing event. Not only is it Dev Intersection, but Microsoft Connect is at that event also. So if you want to attend Microsoft Connect, if you want to see all the big announcements from Microsoft as we go into the winter, you're going to want to either tune in live here on Twitch, and this channel will be syndicating the feed. Or if you want to come out and meet and meet us in person, you want to hang out with some of the folks from Connect, you want to meet me, you want to meet Suze Hinton, you want to meet Scott Hanselman, you want to meet Scott Hunter, um, Jeremy Lickness, some of the other... Uh, uh, cloud developer advocates, Amanda Silver, they will all be at Dev Intersection first week of December. If you're interested in joining us, check it out. DevIntersection.com. Hey, Ancient Coder, good to see you and Rambling Geek. Hello, hello. All right. Let's. Uh, oh, and I see leading ladies here when I look at the list of folks that are in the chat room. Good morning. Um, all right. Very cool stuff. So I want to take a look, let's take a look at what Architang has here. And then I want to talk a little bit about referential integrity and what's going on here with CoreWiki so we can resolve one or two of these issues that we're seeing and that you may have with your project as well around, around logging in, around how to maintain user state and properly forget users and everything that users have impacted when they leave your application. Fake blue eyes. What fake blue eyes? What are you talking about? These blue eyes? These? Those are real, friends. Right there. Look at that. It don't get any more real than that. Oh, yeah. Hey, VTMR. Uh, so, Homeline, yeah, those are real blue. They don't get any bluer than that. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> I like the uh, I like the HTML hex code there. Very nice. But no, nope, not fake at all. Nothing fake here. This is all entirely real. Oh man. Um, all right. So new login thoughts. So we changed up a little bit of, about our login process previously on Fritz and Friends, and um, we changed CoreWiki so that now instead of logging in. With, well, here, let me show you, right? Let's go out to CoreWiki Info. The previous version of CoreWiki, you would log in with an email address. That's right, Ancient Coder. Nothing fake about me. Woo! Darn Skippy. Ric Flair says so. <laughs> All right. Um, this is going to take its good old time getting started. There we go. So when you log in and you, it, when you log in with, 
the standard things that come with ASP.NET Core. The standard template wants you to log in with an email address, right? And that might be okay for your application. Um, but it feels weird that our user objects in ASP.NET Core have a um, username object and they have an email property, right? They have these two properties sitting there side by side. Why do I have a username and I have an email address, right? I want to have a username, something like C-Sharp Fritz. Um, and I want to have my email address be my email address, not what I log in with. So we wanted to fix this. We wanted to change this over to a username that you could log in with and then make the email something secondary, something that while you're working with the while you're working with the application, uh, that's from when I installed Endepend when we were doing the Halloween stream. Um, when you're working with the application, your email should be secondary. It's not something that is the primary interaction with the application. So let's make that a secondary consideration and not expose your email when you go and navigate around the application or you make changes to things. Let's, let's make it more username or even a display name focused. Are both the email and username unique? Good question, Bardaki. Username does need to be unique. An ancient coder is correct now. We made a change to the application so that the email is required to be unique. Um, why not let the user choose what you log in with? Some sites do it. We can do that. We can do that as well. Let's talk about it. And I think that's that's some um, additional consideration we can make here. L let me read what Argtang has for us here. Since you changed login to use username, we created some possible issues. When resetting your password, if a user has forgotten their login, they might not be able to try with a new password if they don't remember their username. So, Bardaki, you might be onto something here. Hey, Robert Tables. Oh, we're having a great day today. We're gonna we're gonna continue where we where we left off in Las Vegas. Um, gosh, next time I do a Las Vegas stream, I should figure out how to get like like a big headpiece with the feathers and things, so I look like a Las Vegas show person. I don't know. That'd be weird, but fun. Um, most sites let, let you log in via email. Therefore, we need to make it clear that the username is what we ask for or make it so you can use either username or email. Yes, yes, yes. This is exactly what Bardaki is suggesting in the chat room right now. Look at this. It's like, it's like we've all done this before. Um, if we use both the same form, we need to make sure we cannot leak via timing attacks. We also need to test registering with Twitter and such. Um, so registering with Twitter, we know works. C Sharp Showgirls. Now that's, that's not right. That's not right. Wow. That's, that's a bad, that, no. Um, shouldn't the internal reference not even be an artificial numeric key and you look up the username? Getting there. Getting there. This way you can keep articles, but cut any link to mail or username if somebody wants to be forgotten. Getting there. Hold on to that thought. You are right there, Tagaron. Hey, Atif. We're <laughs> we're about to land square in the features that you're that, that you're interested in working on. So let's uh, let's dig into this. Um, and who's got the thumbs up here from Daniel? Okay. So let's uh, let's go over to our code. I like what you guys are saying. What the what what the folks in the chat room are saying. Stop. I work on this. I don't need to say how quality is because I work on this. Uh, let me push that font size up. Hello? Hello? I'm control queuing and it's not jumping into the quick launch. Font. Thank you. And I also need to turn on, um, what's it called? Let's bump this to 17, make it a little bit easier for everybody to see. And we need to start Karnak, so you can see my hotkeys when I use those. What if the user wants to also have the articles deleted? Should that not be the default? I disagree with that being the default, and we'll get to that. Um, the PII indirect lookup is precisely how some people are complying with GDPR. Yes. Picture froze. No, it wasn't that the picture froze. It's It wasn't popping me into that window there. Um... 
And you, you, Homeline, you should be able to be forgotten. I agree. Hey, Coded Beard, good to see you. Homeline, it's actually a default feature of the template. When you are logged in, and let me just log in here with my Twitter account. Bring, there we are. Um, and you click in, if you go down to personal data, you can delete and it will remove, it'll remove your login completely from the system. However, if you've contributed to some things, you may accidentally write, if you delete an article, that impacts now the entire application. GDPR covers personal data, therefore if the user details are deleted, the article can be assigned to anonymous. Yes. Let's take a look. So let's, I want to dig into what ArgTang has here for us. And I want to show you the, the, um, the, the commit that I just pushed up. I actually pushed it up this morning, but I did the work yesterday during the flight home. I wanted to change. So we're saving the user's display name into our articles. So, and it didn't build properly. Look at that. Why did that fail building? .NET failed with non-zero exit code on the test project. Ugh. All right. So we're still running into this issue where our project isn't building reliably, and I don't think that's us. Um, delete of articles st can still be done if really required. Agreed. But that's not a GDPR. GDPR is the privacy of the individual. And the individual, if you contribute to an article... You've contribute, contributed that to the application. You can remove the reference that you worked on it, and we can reassign that to anonymous. But it's trickier than that. Janescu says, let's drink coffee. Well, today, I've already had some coffee. Today, I am I'm enjoying some G Fuel. Today in Finland is Father's Day. That's awesome. Congratulations. While more of a burden of developers, GDPR is by and large really, really good for all of us as digital citizens. I agree. I do agree that it is good for us as digital citizens, especially in the wake of how folks like Facebook have um, abused the trust that we've placed in them when we share information with their platform. So I've updated the application now so that it'll save your display name into the articles. Not bad. But I do like what we were saying earlier, and I'm going to scroll back up here in my chat window. Um, I liked the comment. Um, oh, and Bardaki, if the EU says that the content you contributed to needs to be forgotten as well, I'm going to put that in my... I can put that into my privacy policy that's and say, if you contribute to an article, we now own that content as a as a core wiki community and your contribution is made you are now granting access to that contribution in perpetuity right that's where a privacy policy comes in if you contribute something we own that um but your information about you yes you can forget we can abide by uh forgetting that so I believe Bardaki was saying, be nice to be able to log in with either. Ma says, happy Veterans Day. Yes, thank you very much. Everybody that served, um, I very much appreciate all of our service people that have uh, done some good work for us. Um, Amish Dev, let me come back to that. What if the article is about the author? Let me come back to that. That's now in the realm of deleting an article. And deleting an article, I think, is something you should always be able to do. Um, and there might need to be a workflow around that as well. well let's let's come back to that. That's a very good question, Amish Dev. Um, so let's let's come back. Article deletion falls more into copyright territory. Yes, Delzy. It's normally a contribution to the wiki. So if you delete articles, it's if you retain the copyright to the article. Um... Right, and I think that's where we may want to put in some workflow so that an editor or an admin has to approve, right? You say, delete this, and we'll soft delete. We'll hide it, maybe. Let's come back to that. I don't want to get too far away here. I want to address the login issue first. So the question, and I think it's a good point from Bardaki. Let me run the application. Hello, Visual Studio. 
Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Visual Studio froze on me. I, I can't I can't back this up. This is how you can tell we're live. I mean, literally, it's toast. That stinks. We're going to have to kill Visual Studio and restart it. That feels bad. Okay. What the heck does this leaf mean? I, I don't get it. Go away. I told you to end. Now it says suspended. No. Go. Shoot. Right? And it won't go away. I'm going to close this also. Make sure that we don't have it. You're kidding, right? Yes, close. Don't prompt me. I closed you. Do it. Yeah, Visual Studio is taking a hard pass here. And... Wow. I know it's not responding. End it. Thank you. I have never seen Visual Studio behave that way. Um, hey, Tib. Here to lurk for a while. Hope your morning goes well. Uh, it's, I, I will see. It's power saving. I get power saving. There's other logos for power saving that are more standard. Let's try reopening that. Holy crow, Moz! Thank you so much for that kind cheer. Um, we'll make a fine donation to Girl Develop It based on that cheer. And I'm going to drop a little cheer graffiti here into our code that we work on for this login. Thank you so much. But yes, we will ma uh, make a contribution to Girl Develop It. No, I don't want this. Um, go away. Maybe I need to uninstall Independent. Maybe it's misbehaving but no i'm locked out again okay oh all right unit testing kicked off good um so let's start this and let's see how it runs so that you can see where the login is and then we'll we'll talk about making that update and then figure out all right what does it mean to start deleting yourself and how it should impact our articles um, just had a flashback to IntelliJ indexing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Restart the machine. No, can't do that because I'm broadcasting from it. Even removing someone's personal data, it would be questionable if the username is personal data. Whilst it relates to a person, it's not sufficient to identify the person. Um, that's something I would want to talk to somebody who's a legal expert in it before I go too far into that. You might be onto something, but I, I would prefer to get, get legal review on that. Um, so here, when I click login, now it says username, and you can log in with your username here in the application. Now, for some folks, username is their email address, and some it isn't. Yeah, the, I, I do understand the logic, but we're not quite there. There must be a gray area. If my article contains personal information, are you allowed to sign over full rights to it? Um, well, technically, when you post things to Facebook, you are signing over full rights to it. If you read through their, their information. Your pseudonyms could still be personal to you. C Sharp Fritz is me, yes. Right? And C Sharp Fritz is, is my personal branding. So... I, you see me use that everywhere, and we want to, uh, if I want to be forgotten as a user of the system, I'm going to want that removed as well. Um, so now, let's see if we can change this so that you can log in as either, with either a username or an email address. So my login is over here in the areas, identity, uh, pages, I think it's account, there it is, login. Um, so right now we have a label for input username. My input is an input model because this is a view model with the username. Um, I'm going to put a display on this. Display is an attribute that you can put on things here. So you can tell it 
exactly what the display, what that label should be that goes with this field. So it's a way for us to generate that label automatically, and it will also allow us to localize it later. Um, so I'm gonna change this to say user, username or email address. All right, um, I think I need to put, where'd it go? Name equals, fantastic. Uh, there we go. So now you'll be able to key in either there, but I still need to take an appropriate action to try one or the other when you actually log in. So that'll happen on the post back. And if you remember from Razor Pages, we handle the HTTP post action, right? So um, the post method, I'm sorry. When that post happens, when you click the button to submit, it comes into this post async method. And I'm going to check in here. One of the first things it's going to do is it's going to try to sign in with that username right here. Now, um, that username could be someone's username, but it could also be someone's email address. So we should also look up and try to log in with their email address here. Um, wow, a lot of stuff here in, in the chat room. Let me just take a quick peek and see if there's anyone. Uh, game launchers like Blizzard have unique codes, so you can't just message someone based on their username. Oh yeah, there's that too. Does password request immediately invalidate the current password? I don't know. I haven't looked into going any further beyond what the standard ASP.NET Core features are. We'll, we can take a look at that next. Um, if you want to be forgotten, then you have the right to be forgotten completely. Yes. If the person which personal has contributed to an article, he has given up. It's like you have eaten something and then you want it to be uneaten to not get fat. You lost me there, Stealthy. Uh, not deleting the username, but protects that person because it prevents someone else coming back later and registering that username. That's interesting. Um, that's very interesting. Let's come back to that. If someone else posted personal info about someone else, it's a whole other thing. Yes, that, right? If you dox someone, that's a problem as well. Can you check if the login name is a valid email? And if not, try the username. Well, actually what I can do is I can look up someone by their email address, right? Why, what's that really, really small text there? Um, so what I can do, what? Go away, shoo. Um, if I receive a user manager here, not just a sign-in manager, if I receive a user manager, there it is for a core wiki user, and we'll call that user manager. I'll stash a copy of that. User manager equals user manager. Fix my tabbing there, because it's a little off. I'll control dot and generate a read-only field. There we go. So what I can do, first thing is I can say, um, after result su it succeeded, not if the re result requires two-factor, and not if they've locked themselves out. Before we get to invalid login attempt, let's say else if, uh, mm -hmm. oh no, I don't have to. Hang on, hang on. Let's check to see if the user manager, else if user manager, and let's, um, we want to get user. Do, 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 do. Find by, find by email. There it is. And we want to pass in the email, which is going to be, it would be if they keyed that in instead. And let's await that. So now find by email async, this should return a user. So it's actually, you know what, let's move that outside here. Right? Okay. Um, if user does not equal null, so we actually found a user, um, then let's try and log in with that user. So let's also say, um, and then try to sign in. Ah, uh, wait a sec. Um, do this over here. 
and then uh, come here, come here, like that, right? But instead of input username, change this to, I, I don't have a keyboard command, sorry. Um, we're going to change this though to user dot username. There it is. Because we found the user. So if... Hmm. I only want to do that. I think we need to move this here, right? And then if result dot succeeded. But now it feels like I'm going to go through this exact same thing here. Or I've got to do all this garbage. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and then? And I would have to go through and check all that stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna end up looping here. So what if I what if I put a little recursion in here? Hey Svava, you're right, Napol. Oh wow, Napoli Napoleon. Yes. So we'll get back to the personal information in just a minute. I want you to be able to log in with a username or an email address. So I think what I want to do here, right? I, this feels like I'm going in circles here. So let's move this. Um, right, if I, and if I try to log in like that, that's going to feel weird. What if I did, what if I always did var, uh, var user equals user manager find by email, right? And pass in, right, that input username. So we try and find that person first. We're going to need to await that. And then um, let's also do user uh, equals, um, right? User will double check if they're null. If they are null, then let's try and find them by, um, find by, is it name? Will that find by username? Yeah, there we go. Input dot username. So we find the user first. We're gonna need to put a wait in front of that, aren't we? Right? Right? Uh, no, the await needs to go over here. Yeah, there we go. Good, good, good. So then we can change this to user.username. Um, chain calls. Yeah, I. that's a little bit of what we're doing there. Um, am I being moderated? EM triple, I don't think. Oh, wait. Ancient coder was. Let me add that back in. Let me see. I don't think you were moderated. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. The get out clause would be by registering on the service, we will store and use your username, email, and other selected personal data to be able to fill our contract. In return, you'll be able to add, alter, and edit articles, posts, and contribution. Should you wish to terminate your user account, this contract will remain in place. You're welcome at, yeah, there, uh, Andre, I think that's a, that, and that's part of the, the privacy policy that we're talking about is saying that when you do contribute to an article, you are granting us access to that content and you're right. And you have the right to be for your personal information to be forgotten, but your contributions will be retained. Um, pretty sure once you put it in Facebook they own it yes they do they do own it yes and that's where Facebook's run into a bit of a problem um, and usernames actually can't contain an at check this out if I go um, not here no no we, we did a bunch of work around I'm gonna close all but this we did a bunch of work around our identity configuration and it was over here so options sign in require a confirmed email options user require unique email but there's also options user come here you allowed username characters and right now it does include the at sign so we could amend this to say that it doesn't allow the at sign and then we could properly detect that so you're right Moz and I'm not I'm actually I'm okay with removing that I'm okay with 
yeah, let's, right, let's do this. Um, oh, oh, I got an idea. I got an idea so that we can still use the default settings, right? And tell me that I'm, I'm crazy for doing this, right? Replace at, right? Huh? What do you think? Is there, is there a remove? Hey, go away, Karnak. Thank you. There is a remove. Fantastic. Just re uh, it wants a start index. I don't want a start index. Is there just a character? Nope. No, do the replace. Replace is good. So we're going to find the at remove it. How's that? Check email only if the at symbol exists. Bingo. There you go, Ace Flames here. Um, need to remove author name property from article domain entity and move it into respective view model. And we are not storing user info, only the good of a user. Yes. Let me come back to that. Because, yeah, this is the trickle down of the GDPR. I'm, we'll get to that in just a minute here. Uh, da, 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 that should work, right? Why am I getting an under? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, <laughs> right, and this will build. Never store user data. I, I have to store user data. That's kind of the thing. Empty character literal. Mm, I want to remove it. But it won't let me give it an empty. Right. Change this to a, to a double quote. And we're all right with that. Ah, good. Okay. Uh, let someone else store it. I kind of agree. We need to get we need to get back to that because there is some information that I do want to be able to show on the application. So at login now, instead of doing this double hit, I can say um, right instead of doing the double search, um, right I can say uh, input dot username dot contains right so if it contains the at then find by email otherwise find by name then this still works and we're good ask for it from another source each time no completely disagree Shmuley, because then I'm hammering off of Twitter or Facebook or something like that on every request, which means now I'm very dependent on those other services. I'd rather cache those locally. So that's, that's, yeah, a Robert Tables. Yes, I, you are absolutely right. Because we would get rate throttled real quick. If you contribute your address or other personal information to an article, there must be a significance to the topic of the article, and removing would alter alter the core of the article. Yes. Let's be careful, wanted. Let's let it. It, it is a little arrogant, yes, but I I understand what Shmuley is saying, and and it's he's he's not trying to be arrogant. He's trying to defer the responsibility. Um. So. To be friendly, to be to be clear, it while it is deferring that responsibility, we you know, let's be polite, let's be we're all friends here. You know, let's make sure that, that we're okay with that, okay? Because um that thank you, wanted. I, I very much appreciated that. Um yeah, let's let's continue. Storing in memory is much less risky than storing on disk. It is a valid issue, yes. But I, if you're not logged in and I need to display your username from Twitter, I need to go make that fetch. So, um, all right. So now I'm pivoting and you can log in with, with email or username to the application. Fantastic. It'll go figure it out based on whether you have an at sign. If it does contain the at sign, find by the email otherwise. And then what I was trying to do <clears throat> down further, we don't need to worry about it anymore. Terrific. Okay. Keep it in memory, just not disk, database, etc. Um, well, I need to cache it. And that cache could be persisted. So there's that. 
let's continue and then and come back to some of these other questions. So what I want to do now, come over here, clear this. Um, so I've updated my identity hosting and my login. So let's commit these changes. And uh, here. So this is for 348 argtang um, addressed 348. You can now log in with either email or username. And let me log in. There we go. So now it's signed. Hello. There we go. Push that up. Um, at, at that point, you might as well store it on disks. Yeah. This is tricky stuff. Absolutely. Very tricky. And even though even though some of us are very skilled developers that have been around for a long time, um, lawyers basically took what, what we knew and what were good practices for us and threw it out the window. And we now need to reevaluate how we store and persist this information. Um, you will, you only will have users that are also on other platforms, which will, you allow as login providers. Yes. Should the site not also tell you that you can use both now? I did update that. Um, so check this out. I updated it in my display. So watch this. <laughs> watch this. Because I used input model and my username has a display like this. This is a way for us now to pass that information into our label and do, 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 do. Um, no bug found. I, I'll, I disagree. GDPR is actually something that folks are very concerned about. And as a, as yes, this is a little bit of a toy project. I'm not going to disagree with that. However, it is a learning project. And for us as developers learning how to practice our craft, this is something good that we should be aware of and that we should spend some time talking about because it does impact all of our systems. So let's spend some time talking about that, learning about it, understanding it. We do have some folks from, I typed not instead of now. Oh no, did I? Oh no! <laughs> all right, so here's the thing, right? Let's, uh, I spelled a mend wrong. Uh -huh. So you can actually change this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There we go. And now push. Oh, it's going to want me to pull first. Yeah. Now push. All right. Fixed. Um, it is an international conversation. Oh, yes. It'd be awesome if we could learn to develop web API. Well, I think web API is something that we're going to, we're, we're going to land on here. We have some friends. Um, Janesco in stream is actually working on putting a blazer front end in front of CoreWiki. We're, we have some friends that also want to do a Xamarin front end on front of CoreWiki. So doing, doing things like, uh, an API in front of this, I think are a very good conversation. Absolutely, Crows. Yes. Um, it's awkward because in like 10 months, the UK won't be in the EU, but we made GDPR into your law. If we left the GDPR, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? GDPR is, is kind of viral because GDPR affects any application that somebody in the European Union can use. So while I might be in the States, because this application is published in on the internet and somebody from the EU can access it, it's covered by GDPR. Even though I am not, I personally am not subjected, subjected to the GDPR rules, because I've published something that's available internationally, it is subjected to GDPR rules. So... What if we used Gatsby and GraphQL to create a static PWA version of the wiki? You could just host it in an S3 bucket as a read-only, very fast static site. Absolutely. You could do that, and that might be a great topic for us to discuss and walk through and learn together here on stream. 
And, and Robert Tables, you've landed on exactly why I chose this application and this structure for, for why we're doing this so that we can learn some of these other technologies because we'll have something, an application that we, we very much understand and we're able to enhance with those other frameworks and technologies. Um, ban the whole of EU's IP addresses. Now, some American newspapers actually did that. And and they were they were they were treated quite poorly for making that decision. And I I've got to kind of agree with the folks who were upset about that. Big companies can't afford to lose potentially 800 million customers. Amen wanted. They can't do it. Um da, 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 da. that's what Google said for Android. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've now put our login so people can log in with their email or or their username. Let's go back over because we do have another area here that does that does feel a bit GDPR-ish. And that's around the you know what I you know what I need to do? I need to also make sure I update my local my local application database. All right, hang on. So core wiki data. Now I can't just do a .NET EF database update. I need to also specify my context, which is I believe core wiki context, right? Uh, da, 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 data entity framework, application DB context, okay. So if I say application DB context, and then I need to specify, well, let's see if that works. I needed to specify the project when I applied the migrations. This should work, shouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Please? Nope, all right, so here's, here's one of these weird errors that I was getting. Let me see if I can go and tell it to go back up to, or, no wait. Because that error is absolutely, this error, there is no .NET Framework version 2.1 ever, anywhere, anyhow. This is a, in my opinion, this is a, this is a bug, right? In my opinion, this is not, because I have 2.1.0. There is no version 2.1. Um, so what's it actually looking for? Where did it get that version number? feels really bad. Um, and let me do this, corewiki.data and see if that works. Right? Because I want to tell it, here's the project that it's in and here's where to go update it from. You spend half a day trying to fix this. I agree, Atif. This is weird. No, it, so Na Napoleon, let me make sure I'm pronouncing your name right. Napoleonon? It's, it's not trimming it. it. It doesn't ever see it as a version number, like like a number number, right? It's always a string that that version is being carried around on, and it will never drop it. So that was the command that we needed to update, that we needed to use to update. .NET EF database update dash C, so we specify the context, and then the project where it resides. So uh, I think, and I, I want to reach out to our Entity Framework team friends, I think this error message is a misnomer. And as Atif is saying, it's, it's going to cause new developers, folks who aren't familiar, to lose a lot of time trying to chase this down. Um, it's a hot topic of discussion. Uh, can we keep the discussion on implementing it and not justification? I agree, EM Triple. Let's, let's absolutely stay focused oh on how we implement those capabilities. The justification is a whole other thing. It doesn't matter why. It's here. So, um, a database update bad update would be nice to have. You know what? Great idea, Stelzy. Let's do that. Um, I'm going to just copy this. Um, let's put it up a level. Actually, do I have an update dot command here? I don't. Let's call this uh, database. Update CMD. Yes, create a new file, please. Um, and let's go down into core wiki and execute that command. Um, at echo off. Nah, leave the echo on, I guess. 
so you can see what happens. Right, so now I should be able to run, hello? Uh, database update. And it should just do it. A similar bat for DB migration would be helpful. It's going off the bottom of the screen. My bad, I'm sorry. Build fit, now, what am I supposed to do with that, right? .NET build. Uh, oops. Yes, I know. I know. That should have built. I know. Very helpful messages. It's it's great. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I mean, th this, this is a disaster. Flat out disaster that I am not touching that. I am running a build and it runs into this every time. Every time. Come on. No. come from which directory you want to build it. Am I running the latest bits of Visual Studio? You bet I am. I'm running on a preview. There is a preview five, it doesn't matter. I am outside of Visual Studio, I'm at the command line and I'm running .NET build and it does not work. Now it does. .NET is not running in the background here. If I run this a second time, I, I am this doesn't make sense to me. I'm running on the latest production version of this, and it is. I'm not sure why, but my widget's locked up there. And it is, th this is the version I was told to run. Yeah, right, they fixed it, sure. Um, this is insane. It is a Heisen bug, it absolutely is. Okay, so now if I try and do my database update command, It only happens when you're not looking at it. Hmm. 
okay, we weren't getting these errors at all before either. I mean, literally nothing has changed. I've run build now four or five times in the last five minutes, and I've gotten how many different results coming out? I've had errors come out. I've had the warnings come out with the errors. I've not had any errors come out. It works on my machine sometimes. Ship it. Yeah. It's perfect. It's wonderful. All right. Let's go back to what I was trying to talk about before our tools distracted us significantly. In our domain object for the article, we have this concern because the, art, the author's name is being carried into the article. Yes, this does break the definition of insanity. Amen there. You're right, Robert Tables. If it does work on your machine, then let's ship your machine. I didn't want to click that. That's not what I wanted to click. Ship your machine. And actually, some people do that. No, I'm not turning my computer off and on again. And that actually did work one time was I closed, right, I, I closed PowerShell and reopened, and that flushed something in memory. But what do I know? There's the warnings, and there's the error. So I'm I'm at a loss. This this new version of the SDK and .NET and the ASP.NET Core app where they're trying to push around and play games with the Razor build tasks has not been reliable for us. Yeah, there is some sort of a change. I was having this exact same issue on a different PC. Yes. So this is a this is part of the, they're they're attempting to move a task into the command line interface and out of ASP.NET Core app and it is not reliable. Is not reliably compiling and fails occasionally with a, a an error message that I cannot take action on. Please assist. And we've got plenty of video showing exactly how that works, how it doesn't work. So. Oh, thank you for the tweets there. All right. Moving on, I want to get back to talking. So we've addressed this. This should be, right? This should be cleared out. Yep. So now I, why am I? Are you kidding? Why is test suddenly not building? Something down here. Error. .NET failed with code. There's no argument that corresponds to, ah, okay. So we do have a failure user manager that we're now passing in. It doesn't exist in our tests. All right, let's address that. And then we'll move into passing that display name around. Could this be logged as an issue rather than a tweet? Um, they don't look at issues over the weekend. And, um, I've also run into scenarios where um, I've already opened this as an issue and it's been closed as fixed in this release. But it could certainly be put over there. Sure, that's that's one way to do this. Um, where was I? Let's take a look at that test and make sure we get the tests running correctly now. 
So, bad me, I, I committed some code without running through and making sure my tests work. Um, so. Throw me a freaking bone here. Yeah, you're right, Turrican. Um. So, all right, here we go. These are the two errors that we have now in... Right, this doesn't have a user manager object for the create page, which is now needed. <laughs> Don't happen to be on live TV? Yeah. You know, some of us are. Um, and a user manager right here. Which isn't really doing anything. Right, so if I pass null into that, that should compile and work properly. And the other one. So this is when you're creating a new article. If I pass null in for user manager, while that will work, the test should fail. There we go. Null reference exception, right. Because it doesn't know what the user is to go and get the user information. So we do need to pass in some sort of a mock user manager here when we're attempting to create this. Um, so let's set up, I don't need this breakpoint. And I, that's fine. Uh, let's set up a mock user manager. Where'd it go? I scrolled too far, here. All right, so if we call this user manager, we need to create that. Var user manager equals. Um, right, I want to uh, equals new dynamic mock, right? Ah, come on. Uh, as, there we go, I user manager of type core wiki user. That's a lot of types. All right, let's control dot and get some of these working. That works. Uh, yeah. Okay, now why am I getting a underline on this one? Pushing unverified code. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you're going to be using that argument in your test, you just need to mock that arg. I just think it's going to break with type checking. No, it's not just breaking with type checking, but can I create an instance of mock? Hmm. Yeah. If I do that like this... There we go. Okay. Now I need to return a, a core wiki user for it to re, for it to interact with. Uh, so let's create a new one of those. Uh, user equals new core wiki user. And we were getting the what are we getting out of it here in the create? I'm get, I'm getting I believe the display name out of it. Test user. Okay. Um, so let's set up a behavior. Yeah. All right. So on the manager, right, we are getting, um, I think it's just get user. Yeah. Get user async. Oh no. Is any, right, is any is one of these. Claims, principle, ugh, I'm not feeling good about this. I'm not feeling good about this team. Returns, user. Mm 
Yeah, it doesn't like that. Uh, oh. Um, task. Ugh. Come on. Uh, yep, from result. Okay. So now when I pass in, it shouldn't be user manager, but it should be user manager object. Right? No. Oh, wait, 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 wait. User manager dot setup. Ah! Wrong key. Right, so now, yes, object, okay. Go, work, work, please work. Give me some greens. No. Hmm. Um, hey, Endorn, what is the program? Yes, this is, um, this is, you're right. Thanks, thanks so much, uh, chat room. Hey, Lou, is it Lou High? Hello. And we're using a, this is a mocking framework. This allows us to conjure faux objects, fake objects that we're going to pass into our tests so we can verify things are working properly. Um, but this is, let me see, where's my error? Cannot instantiate proxy of class, user manager, blah, blah, blah. Could not find a parameterless constructor. Feels bad. It should be I user manager. Um, why am I not getting I user manager? Right, there is I user manager. Hey, Uncle Bill. Um, right, it's isn't there I user manager? Uh, here, I user manager. I thought that was a thing. There's user manager of type this, but I thought it implemented I user manager. Inheritance, no. I, yeah, I thought this implemented the I user manager interface. Hmm. Um, da, 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 da. Right. It's just user manager. Yeah, but it can't, it can't create that. It doesn't have a parameterless interface. Hmm, <laughs> just a brief visit while I prep for work. No problem, Uncle Bill. Thank you for stopping in. Um, right, ASP.NET Core 2.1. Yeah, I thought. ASP.NET user manager, right? That's the derived object, right? ASP.NET, I'm sorry, user manager. Uh, give it some parameters, feed that thing. I don't know, no. And I don't want to create my own wrapper around it. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. What the heck? to create an, an, a wrapper just it, it's expecting a t user yes so i have one here right that core wiki user is a type of user um but what do you mean em triple to give it some parameters right i'm new mock of this with three overloads mock behavior uh optional arguments if the mac mock type is a class all right well what's the constructors around it um, I oughta, no. If I said new user manager of type core wiki user, right? Oh dear God. You're, you're kidding me, right? If I were to just try and pass nulls into this thing, just to get it running. I mean, are you? That's insane.
right? It is a beast. And it may make more sense to wrap it, yeah. Uh, I think you might be onto something. Ugh. Oh. That's just dreadful, isn't it? All right. Let's do this. To get around this. Uh, no, I didn't want that. I want that one. Let's create user store. This feels bad in so many different ways. I mean, really bad. Um, ugh. Let's create an interface. Now, if I create this with a constructor that takes a type of user manager, I'm still going to run into the same thing. Do we need the user manager in our test? Okay. This one's good. I'm going to get rid of get. In the test, the author name that's being created here is coming out of the user name now. That's now the user display name. So we need to make sure that that is being passed in and it's not optional, correct? Oh my gosh. Ugh. Okay. Mm. All right. So if I'm returning, I've. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Public interface, I user store. Everybody's going to have to go through this, which is, I, I find, I. Which is why I thought I there was an iUser manager property, an iUser manager interface. And that's what I'm running into here is I thought I mean there's iUser store here. Which does some of those things. Um, does user manager implement this? No, it does not. Does it? Is it down here? No. This is like that feeling right before you eat a super hot pepper during a challenge. Yeah. All right. Hang on. I, I see where you're going here. Let's get rid of this thing. We don't need that. So a user store does exist. Ugh. Entity framework core user store. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh man. Th this feels bad in so many different directions. What does user manager? It it only implements i disposable, so I can't even pass user store into this. It gets passed in as part of that. Check out the Stack Overflow. Let's look. I heard you like mocks. Oh no. You can mock the i user store as an argument and create a new user manager passing that in. You can do that? New user manager. No, it, it takes more than just that one, unless there's defaults there. Um, user store. 
Hey, Fody Nick, thanks so much for joining us. These others are not optional arguments. You're going to need to pass something in there. Um... So, this, I think, yeah, answered in 2014. <laughs> That's ASP.NET identity, not ASP.NET Core identity. So, it's changed. Yeah, this is where I think we're going to end up. Um... All right, get mock user manager, new mock, I user, store application user, new mock user manager. Yeah, then you can pass the nulls. All right, let's try that. That feels, that feels like it could work here. All right, so let's place those. User store mock equals this, and instead it's core wiki user instead of application user. And then this is gonna become user store mock, and it's not a return on that. This is uh, user manager equals. Um, user store mock has, um, uh, what do we have? I don't know if it's find by ID or find by name. I don't know which way it's going to be using. Uh, it is odd to work with. Separate the store from the UI. Ooh. It's going to be cleaner if you wrap user manager. Otherwise, you have to wrap the stores in your tests. Yeah. And we are. We're going to. We'll absolutely raid into uh, no op cat later. This. Mm, Right, so users and so this returns that mock user manager. So can I can I still do user manager mock and do that? Not find by name, but uh, what? No, get user. That's what it was. That's what we're doing inside of that. So does that, no, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Uh, oh, wait a sec, expected invocation on the mock once, but with zero times. Um, ah, that's on the validation on mediator send. Wow, it got way down here now. Ooh. Here. Um, author name is not expected command author name, but it should be user dot display name. Come on, tell me that works. Tell me it works. Tell me it works. Nope. Um. <laughs> Well, it, hang on. It didn't get passed in. Expected command. Um, you're in a create article page. Shouldn't be aware of user manager. Yes. Uh, get back to me. Hang on. Once you get this working, consider extracting a st static method called given user manager. That's not a bad idea at all. Hey, Midnicorn. Hello. Um... Right, so we're we're somewhere in the process here. Right, we're expecting to see it send. Right, the author name here. Whoa, Pac-Man Jr. Thank you very much for that kind gift. Five tier one subs. Shy Sharp, Enric ZB, Firebrim, Tim Burgle, and Zyver. Congratulations. Pac-Man Jr. just gifted you a sub and 
We'll make donations to Girl Develop It for all of those subscriptions. Thank you very much for your kind generosity, Pac-Man Jr. And uh, all of you now get to use the .NET bot everywhere you'd like here on Twitch. Uh, thank you very, very much for that. Very cool. All right. But, but I'm going to take a look here in the create page and see if we can figure out what exactly it's doing because it should just pass through there. Here we go. Right on post. And it's right there. Let's see if we can... Let's see if we can put a break on that test and see exactly what's happening. So I'm going to use my test explorer here to debug and step right into exactly what's going on and see if we can figure out what the deal is. Happy Sunday. Agree, Cammy. Oh my gosh. It's, it's Sunday. I feel like I can be so much more productive on, on a Sunday morning, Sunday and both Sunday and Saturday mornings, but Sunday mornings have been feeling a little bit more productive recently. Um, all right, so here we go. So mediator send, and it's going to pass in a command. And let's see what's on the command. So author name is test user, some content, fake topic. So if I go back to my test over here, right, I'm expecting that display name to come through here. Um, mediator setup. It is any create new article, and then so we're setting up the response. Get is topic available, and we're setting up the response. Setting up a response. We created right, so we're okay. We're creating the model, and this is the article. Oh, you know what? No, no, that's right. How's it going? We're, I think we're going well. We're just trying to figure out why this test is failing. And it sure looks like it's passing things through properly. And if I go back to the actual verification here, right? So our article that we're, the command that we're verifying, come here, you, is receiving a test user, some content, and a fake topic. But test user is particularly what I'm looking for. So if I let that go through, it is a create new article command and the request topic equals fake topic. Yes, those two are the same, right? Request topic. Come on. Come here. Let me. Uh, oh, I'm not in. Yeah, that stepped right through. OK, um, request topic equals fake topic and author name equals test user. And the author ID equals this. Hmm. Happy Sunday. Yes. Yes, yes. What test framework is that? We are using um, XUnit is the test framework we're using. Um, XUnit's an open source framework that's built and runs great on .NET Core. And it's available for, um, for folks to use everywhere. It's completely open source. We know a couple of the folks that work on the project. And they've been working with the .NET team from the beginning to make sure that things do line up and work properly um, for that. You know what, can I put a breakpoint inside that? Yes, that's where I wanna be is inside. Let me try that debug one more time. Uh, here we go. So Visual Studio lets me debug my unit test running so I can actually step right into exactly the unit test that I'm working on. It's an up and down roller coaster, I agree. Um, but that's always the case with software development, you know? Um, so can I step in? I, I hit F11 there, so it should step in. No. Of course it didn't. Feels bad. Um, I have a feeling the author ID isn't lining up. I have a feeling. Right? Let me set the ID here equals user ID. Let's see if that's a GUID and that's a string. Find to string. We can dump the object to see what values might be. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That was it. 
Fantastic. It takes a weird combination of curiosity, determination, strong will, and stubbornness. I am stubborn. Yes. Um, go back over here. So now we have that fixed, right? Database update, let's add that feature. And let's fix our unit tests. Fixed unit tests. That's key in my password. Oh, come on. I don't know what's going on. The PowerShell just goes and stops on me for a little bit. Yeah, I know. Come on. So that test should run properly. So, hey, ancient coder. I don't want to go to work. Wait a sec. This scrolled all the way back up to the top. Ugh. Lots of web searching. Yes. Google Foo is a must skill. We call it Bing Foo where I come from. <laughs> all right. So that all works. Now let's go back and let's talk. Let's talk about um, this issue with the author's name being passed into our domain object. Pulisicky. <laughs> That's it's you know what it is Sunday. I'm concerned that that test includes several details that are not important to its intent. I agree, Janaga. I completely agree. And to get it working, it's working. Now let's go back and refactor and let's let, let's fix it so that it has less of those things that it doesn't really need. Because I completely agree. It's way too complex for what it's actually trying to accomplish. Um, so let's do this. Let's let's start off looking at, first off, this author name. The only reason we're including the user manager here in our create class is so that we can put that author name into our article, which is being done here. And that feels weird. Do I get a lot of backseat coding in my streams? Um, Amish Dev, that's a, that's actually a little bit because I am writing code here and I am I am very much pair programming with you. I welcome it, and um, if if folks get a little bit too far with it, I'm always welcome. I'm I'm always open to receiving a pull request from you. If, if you do think I'm doing something wrong, if there's something that we could do better, please submit a pull request. Let's talk about it. I'm happy to review and discuss those things and discuss why I made certain code decisions here on stream. But it is more like friends helping friends. I do know that there are some live coding streamers who get offended by that, and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. They're allowed to be offended. But the purpose of this stream is to have this discussion. So I'm okay with, I'm okay with that, and I can handle that, and we can, uh, we can crack some heads if we need to appropriately. How's that sound? Pretty good. All right, let's just take a quick peek over on Twitter, make sure I know what's happening here. Things are going well. Good. All right. Okay. And it allows us to learn at the same time. Yes. Right? This isn't one way I'm teaching you. I'm also learning from you. So, um, I have run into streams where folks have gotten a little pushy on their point of view. And we'll, <laughs> we'll cut things off appropriately. So, it's different than someone working on their project with observers. Yes. Different streams have different goals. So I'm I'm kind of agreeing with the 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 sense that the username being passed in here is a little bit much. And if we take a look at our data, don't I have don't I have the I thought I had the SQL server. No, you know what? On this machine, I do have the SQL Lite database browser. If we actually open our database for this, uh, C Dev. Core wiki, core wiki app data. There we go. And we look at the content. Ugh. 
Um, let's take a look at the articles table. So we have all these tables. We have an author ID and we have an author name. And the author name being passed through, well, aren't I humble? Um, right, so, but the author name very much is something that is a display concern. And we should cache that, we should fetch that um, coming out. This is warm and friendly. Thank you, Atif. I, I appreciate that. I've, I've worked hard to try and make this friendly and, and easygoing for folks to join us. And, uh, and, then? and then we talk about things and work them through. And, then? and everybody learns something together. And then? We commit our code, tests run properly, and everybody's happy. Is that some music to code by, flow by? It is 4P3S. Um, 4P3S. Is, is that an electron shell? Get back to me on that. Um, it is. This is music to flow by. This is purple we're listening to today. Um, I was of the opinion this is mob coding. It is, Stelzy. <laughs> it is. Well done. Yes. Very mob coding. Should the author name be changed to user ID? No, because I actually have the author ID over here. And that's storing the GUID so that I do have that anonymous uh, uh, anonymizer in there, right? The GUID doesn't really matter, right? We're okay for, for coming back to our d discussion at the beginning. <laughs> when we store the author as a GUID in this, no problem. That's not a GDPR problem. That's not a privacy concern. But I, I did change the functionality so that the author name being stored is actually the display name. So this is where we're going to run into that issue of I should get the display name at display time to paint on screen. Ah, uh, now the plot thickens. Veronica, do we track author name changes? No, we don't. No, we don't. Um, oh, wow. Is Do you pronounce that uh, Gaia Master 5? Welcome. Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. 4259 followers. That should probably tick to 4260. But uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. I'm not sure we're going to make that December 1st deadline. Oh, and if anybody will be in the Philadelphia area, next weekend I will be giving two, I'll be giving two presentations at the Philly Code Camp next week. Um, I need to put that on the schedule and I'm, I'm confirming Friday. We're trying to do a Xamarin workshop with our friend, James Montemagno here on stream. We'll see how that goes. We'll see if that's, if that's really happening. I think it is, but I need to confirm. It's impressive to me. You've made this welcoming. A lot of times we devs are hard headed and think we have the right way. Well, thank you, dinner. It, it is, it is something that we do try very hard to, to do. Uh, you want to, but Shabbat, oh, I'm sorry. Raldo, 1994, thank you for the follow. Um, all right. So I think we're okay with this. And I think the, the comments that we made, and I think it was, I think it was Veronica and some other folks passing, storing the author name as a property here is going to be a problem. And we're, we're going to need to figure this out. We're going to, this... I don't think we can really carry in our domain object for too much longer here because of GDPR. And this also feeds into the delete discussion. When we delete an, a user, the right to be forgotten, this needs to be cleared out. Well, if it's in the article, now I've got to go search through all the articles and delete your name and flip this to something anonymous. And coming back to the single responsibility principle. Oh my gosh, look at the follow train. Uh, uh, Flock Yorch. Flock Yorch? Thank you for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. If you're deleting a user, I shouldn't be changing articles. Make sense? So, I want to pull author name out of here. And I want, which is going to affect that test we just wrote and come back to the concern that, who was it? Was it Amish Dev? 
Some I'm, I'm trying to remember. Somebody said it feels like there's a lot of extra concerns in that test that shouldn't be there, and I and this I think affects this. Um, so let's start pulling that out and make the display when it does come come time to display. Um, make that something. Uh, da -da. I'm going to allow that. That should have gone through. So, Robert Tables, that, that's a good question. Have you considered making this for getting a user a batch background type of procedures? When you request all your personal info, have a longer process to get it to you. Um, author name can be retrieved on display. Yes, Ancient Coder. Yes. So, um, oh, thank you for the follow for P3S. I appreciate that. Um, I think that's exactly where we're going to do it. And looking at how core wiki functions right now if i go to our production instance of core wiki at corewiki.info when you do navigate to a page it actually doesn't tell you the author when you look at the page so we we don't even need to query it to show it when you're looking at the page when you click edit on the page i don't think we show it there either i clicked edit Thank you. We don't show you who is the author there, but we do show you when you look at the history. That's the only time that I see it being retrieved. It's being retrieved there and a couple times down in here. Okay. So let's move it out. It's right for, for optimizing and, and doing this. We need to do the same with the comment domain entity. Yeah, um, comment's a little bit different, right? Because we actually do need to put their the folks' name here, right? And we need it in order to get their gravatar. So comment, we're gonna need to revisit. We absolutely need to revisit that, but let's start with the article. Um, good, we're good there. Core Wiki theme contest. Yeah, it's been hanging out there. Nobody's written any themes. Um, if somebody wants to write a theme and submit it, um, we'll, we'll pick a good one and somebody I'll send out to somebody a phone case with our logo on it. Or a mug if you'd prefer a mug. So... Um, so we don't even need it on display. I don't think we need to pass the author name down into our object. So I'm going to start all the way down at our domain object and start ripping this out. And in fact, I'm going to do this on a different branch just so I don't break dev. So let's uh, check out feature remove author name. Uh, oops, forgot the dash B. So git check out dash B creates a new branch and moves you over onto that branch. CSS is such a fun dark art. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, all right, so let's start. Let's start gutting that author name. Right. So five references here. I'm going to break all of them. Goodbye. And let's see where it breaks. You know what I should have done. You know what I should have done. Before I just went through and clobbered it. Um, if I do a shift F12 there, it'll find the references and yeah, delete that. Where did my find references go? I just had it pin this and now I can walk through, find all of those places and start removing it. So core wiki application, existing article, author name equals author name. Don't need that anymore. And this is a mapping for author name. Don't need that anymore. Article author name. We probably need to think about checking articles for known personally identifiable. <laughs> Veronica has a very good point here. We probably need to think about checking articles for known personally identifiable information within the content itself. Yes. And that could get a little dicey. There's a level of responsibility there 
that as we automate could become tricky because now we're taking that responsibility into our code. All right, so I just removed all the references to the author name inside of our domain object. Now here I am in the DAO, our domain, our data access object, and we wanna remove the author name there as well. That has one reference here. Well, I'll get rid of that one from article history. And we'll get rid of this. In article history DAO, we should get rid of the author name here as well. There it is. How many references? Two. Get rid of that one. One reference left. to the article history domain object. So we're gonna to need to get rid of it from the domain object as well. All right, so there is an article history domain object. This has an author name, and no references. It's already been dereferenced. Good, get rid of that. Um, your content is our content, yeah, yeah. Privacy policy does help take care of that. Um, but policing people, doxing others, it is a whole different thing. Yes. Yes. And I think um, I, I, I think Veronica has a very good point there. But when we start taking responsibility of inspecting, of automatically inspecting for doxing, there's a gray area there that, that we, wanna, we may not want to step into. It would be a slick feature, Robert. Um, let's document. Let's document the idea, um, and let's create an issue for that in the GitHub repository. If somebody would could go and do that, and we can talk about that on a future stream because we are coming up against. We got about fifteen minutes till noon, and our friend. I I hope she's streaming today. Um, if our our friend uh, Noopcat, Noop Noopcat should be streaming here soon and we want to be sure that we raid over to her stream when she gets started um so, all right so we removed author name from our article history from our dao objects for article um we removed it from our article domain object and it looks like all of our tests are still running so so far so good i'm going to come up to my view model and um, article details. Does this have author name? No, it does not. Um, article edit. Does this? It does not. So I'm going to now do a search for author name across the entire solution and see if we can find places that we need to, we need to fix it. So on the history page is where we have author name. That's okay. That's some place that we did want to show it. Command handler tests. We can get rid of it from these tests on post that's tests migrations that's okay because we're about to get rid of it uh, da, 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 da. snapshot that's fine notification service is taking in the author name hmm string is null or white space author name that's yeah we do want to be able to pass the author name in there but i think that's another ball of wax edit article command is taking author name there I think create skeleton article command, we can get rid of this. That's not what we're working on right now. I don't want to get distracted. Let's come back to that. Added issue 349. Thank you, Robert Tables. I appreciate that. Um, author nine, where did it go? I had that find. Where did my find results? There it is. Um, but edit article command, we don't need the author name as part of this. And it's got six references. Hmm. Ah, because it's passing the author name in. Okay. So here in the profile, let's get rid of author name being passed over. Uh, what? Yeah, delete that. Um, there's author name again. Let's get rid of that one. Okay. 
There's author name for create skeleton, which this shouldn't be a thing, but because we don't do it that way anymore. Um, there's author ID. That's good. There's author name there. Let's get rid of that one. All right. I think... I think that's free of author name references. Four to go here. Um, this is a test. That's fine. This is the edit article command handler. Yeah. Article management service update. And it takes in the author name. We don't want to receive the author name anymore on this. So let's get rid of that. Right. And I should be able to say go to implementation. Yeah. And where it's receiving author name, let's get rid of that. And author name is not being pushed here. Good. Deleting code feels so good, doesn't it? Wow. I love deleting code. Um, all right. So I think I properly backed that out. Let me go back to edit article command. So I still have four references. These are in the test. Uh, I dug -o. Thank you for the follow. The author name is not part of that, so I can delete that. Red line goes away. My test's going to work. Show me some good tests here, fellas. Now I've got lines. Interesting. Like it didn't execute that. Um, oh. All right, we've got some failing tests here as we start deleting things. Confirmed Noopcat is streaming today. All right. I've been keeping an eye on Twitter to see. So we will be sure to raid over there and give her a big surprise when everybody arrives. Love the hate today. Is that a coding hat? No. No. Um, love the hate today. <laughs> what do GDPR rules say? Everybody who posts stuff on Facebook which they didn't want to be public, they shouldn't have posted it. Well, that's a whole nother thing. Love the hat today. Ah, no, this is actually an Overwatch hat. This is... This is the character D.Va from, from Overwatch. Um, in, the, in the lore for the game, she is a... Um, she drives a mech. A, a, <laughs> this... this giant mech that she uh yeah that she flies around and, and just destroys the enemy with really cool stuff um so i need to fix those two update references so that it'll build properly now all right i've got a couple more tests working let's run on and see where else it's broken cool hat for diva yeah this is the stream for the best hats. Yes. Yes, this is Diva. Yes. I don't have a a Diva um, Overwatch pop. I have Lucio and McCree up there. And of course, Doctor Strange. My kids think I look like Doctor Strange. Super Choya, thank you for the follow. Right, I kind of I kind of look like Doctor Strange. Except I I don't have the uh, Eye of Agamotto. So there's that. Um, all right, we've got a couple of build failures here. Let's go back and see what those are. No. But I, I do have failing tests. That's that's good, actually, right? Because we're going through and we're removing this feature. Yes, there is a resemblance. McCree, it's high noon. I agree. Um, all right, so we've been pulling out author name. There's only one reference to author name left here in my edit article command. Well, wait, edit article command shouldn't have that. Oh, right. <laughs> All right, get rid of this. More author names disappearing. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see. Run some more tests. Let's see what fails. And then, we'll, I mean, I'm seeing more and more failing here. Six failing. All right, catch you later, Uncle Bill. Later, nerds. Thanks for stopping in. Failing test does mean that I'm correctly breaking things. Yes. Um, 
but it is diva mesh. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. I forget her the, the by lore her actual name. Um, okay, this is failing. New core wiki user because um, why is it failing? Object reference not set to an instant of an object. Lambda method method call matches. Well, actually, oh, uh, let's get rid of that test and let's get rid of author name here then. So create new article command. We should start removing author name. How many places do we reference that? None. Even better. Show me some run. And I love the live unit test running. This is one of the, one of my favorite product uh, productivity enhancing features, right? Is my unit tests just run for me automatically. So let's see, my search tests, auto mapper, unmapped members were found. Um, article reading DTO is missing author name. Slug history. All right, so this is actually, ah, okay. So article reading DTO inside of our mapping. Let's close everything here. Um, go back over and look at our configuration for auto mapper, which should be, where is it? Configuration, startup, configure auto mapper. Uh, -da -da. Create map article to article reading DTO. Article reading DTO has an author name and no references. So clearing that out should help, right? Run my tests, run, 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 run. GDPR is not preventing you from doing stupid stuff with your data, amen. Laws don't mean you're not stupid. You can still be stupid. Something like that. Um, all right, article managing profile. Do we have, I don't see author name in here, but there's an article managing DTO. That has an author name. Let's get rid of that. Um, but article to article reading DTO. I thought we just cleared that out. Yeah, there we go. Now we're seeing some of these. Yeah, article to article reading DTO. Slug history DTO. I just did article manage. Um, let me go back into this. Article is the domain article which doesn't have author name. So we're okay there. I'm not sure. Destination member list author name. Hang on. So article to article reading DTO. Article, no wait, article to article manage DTO. Go back one. That's in here. Uh, this one. And I thought I removed, yeah, author name's already gone. Run that again. This question is more about the right to erasure. I, I've also heard it referred to as the right to, right to be forgotten, right? Force that test to run, get a clean build. There we go, it's executing now. So slug history, slug history, DTO. Yes, we know that one. And that's the only one that's left. Fantastic. All right. So let me back up out of this. Is it? Is it in here? Where is slug history? Where is that? Uh, no. Hmm. Um, slug history, do slug history, DTO. So slug history, no, that's fine there. Rats. Rats. Is trying to map author name. There it is. Get rid of that one. So that should rerun this and we should see that drop out. 
Here we go, executing. That's why I see the little timer next to the hyphens here. And yeah, this didn't properly refresh last time, did it? Force that to rerun. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I need some good Forrest Gump quotes to drop in here. I feel very gumpish. Gumpish? You like the interface to the test? There we go. Yeah, that's that's Visual Studio 2017. It gives you that capability. Um, I'm going to rerun all the tests here and see what else may have dropped out, what may have broken. We can go through and try and fix this a little bit more. So up here, article search profile. So article to article search DTO. Okay. That's... Where is that being done? Artic uh, let's do a control comma and jump right to article search DTO. There's author name for article search. Let's get rid of that to start. 11 references. Let's see if we can find it. Search, search, mapper map. There we go. Search result DTO. No. I think we're... Yeah, I think that's okay. Right? Keep walking this back to that configuration. Create map. There it is. From article to article search DTO. That's the domain article. Right, so actually, I may have just fixed that. Sorry to leave for a bit. Hopefully back now. Hey, single dad life. Oh, God bless you, Rambling Geek. As a, as a married father... Um, I, I know how hard it is with two kids. My two daughters are in cyber school. That means that I get all the fun of teaching them also. Hey, Ashner, thanks so much for the subscription with your Twitch Prime. Yeah, so if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can bring that over to Twitch. You'll get a Twitch Prime subscription, and uh, you'll get a free subscription to any channel you'd like here on the platform. If you choose to use that with me, we'll make a matching donation to Girl Develop It, and you'll get to use the .NET bot, the C-Sharp bot, anywhere you'd like here on Twitch. Thanks again, Ashner. Um, hey, talk to me, Gooseman. Uh, I'm not sure why that's got a red X there when all my tests ran properly. That feels weird. But I think we effectively now got, yeah, I've still got more red Xs here, even though everything ran. That's weird. Yes. Noop Cat Raid coming soon. Let's see. Right, we're expecting to see her go live. And then we'll figure out how to jump over there. I think I've effectively now dropped the author name from everywhere. Uh, refresh the file. I don't... Right, there's no way for me to... Right, if I run it from here, right, it sure looks like that test isn't, right? If I go through to that test, it ran properly. So, yeah. All right. Um, some kind of UI lag or something with the test results. Could be. Could be. Stand by in the moment. Um, you can do this in Visual Studio Code as well. Start and stop the live unit testing. That's not a bad idea. Get it to refresh. Ooh, still collecting failure details. Well, it's actually still running. So here's what I think I'm going to do. Um... It's tough for the rest of us to figure out how to comply 100%. Yeah, you know what? And complying 100% is, is it's out there. That's, that's a very noble goal, but it's something that I don't think many, fecal, many, many people feel like they can accomplish. Whew. All right. Um, so that's running. I now have that author name removed from everywhere, except for 
inside of my razor views. And if I try to build now, it's actually going to fail because it's referencing... Well, no, it's not. it shouldn't fail, actually, because the view models don't have don't have the username for that article history right it's while it's there it there's nothing to pass into it in the article history view so I'm gonna go down here to pages right article history where is it history and if we look at how this fetches um, so the article history will be returned here which does include the author name and uh, right, this is the view model. We need to get that loaded up and get article with histories by slug query. What the? Okay, yeah, this is a request and it's gonna set that fine. And then send it and then here's where we're gonna need to remap that. Right to be forgotten when you have PII and data and DB backups. The database backups is a whole nother problem, right? Database backups just throws all of PII into a crazy, crazy place. So here's what I'm going to do. I think we've updated and we've fixed a lot here with removing that author name. Um, removed author name from storage. And I still need to generate the database migration. There we go. I'm going to push this. Uh, we're going to create a new branch called feature remove author name. And I think I want to pass a dash U so it tracks it. There you go. So now it's up there and we can track that and we can actually go through and finish removing the author name so that our GDPR issue of removing the author name isn't something that we need to run into. So next time, we'll finish putting that author name in so it comes out of our user database. And if the user doesn't exist, we can output anonymous or forgotten user or something like that. All right, here's what we're going to do. We are going to wrap up here. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me today on this Sunday morning. I'm starting to like Sunday mornings. What do you think? It feels like a pretty neat way to have a full developer stream day here. If we start with me and then when Noob Cat starts, we raid over to her. Um, it also works out nicely because Mrs. C Sharp Fritz is now working on Sundays instead of Saturdays. So we end up we end up being able to work a little bit easier here. Um, we started talking about GDPR and we started talking about logging in with a username or an email address and making our email address something that isn't as exposed in the application. I think we've done a good job of removing that so that your email address as a user isn't displayed to everybody it, when you create an article, that is. And we're starting to remove the author name now so it's not a domain concern, but it's a user and security concern. I think that's the right way for us to go. I hope you come back and join me on Tuesday We'll set up and we'll finish implementing the removal of these usernames. But for now, we've committed all of our code up there. It's on our feature remove author name branch in GitHub. If you're interested in contributing, if you want to help out, feel free to open an issue, submit a pull request, and we'll take a look at it when we come back on Tuesday. I'm going to set up so that we raid our friend Noopcat. Nope, Noopcat, Noopcat. If you want to stick around and join, have some fun over on her stream where she's going to be talking about web USB today. Click that raid button up at the top of the screen. Get ready to join. We'll all head over there together. Get your .NET bots ready. C Sharp Bot with a capital B. And we'll say hi to her. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining me. And we'll see you next time. All righty. Take care. And we'll see you over on Nuopcat stream. Come on, let's go. Thanks so much.